Hi everyone and welcome to my Go course. Today we're gonna get started with Golang. The history of Go began in 2007 at Google where this language was designed as a simple programming language, efficient both in compiling and executing and very effective for writing robust and reliable programs. The programming language Go was publicly announced at Google in 2009 and the first stable version won Dot zero was released in 2012. As of now, August 2022, the current stable version of Go is 1.19, so it's relatively new language. Golang is used by many different companies, by big famous companies and startups. I'm pretty sure you know some of those companies listed here. And what can we do with Go and what is it used for? Go is well suited for building network infrastructure services, as well as cloud services, um, tools for developers, DevOps, site reliability engineering. And since this language is general purpose, it can be used also for web development, for things like graphics or even machine learning. So it has many different purposes. So to get started with Go, open the go.dev go website. I already opened it. And if you want to download and install the binaries then just click download button but if you also want to find some useful resources you can press the get started button and here we have the download option and also we can check some documentation in this section or even open a tour of go which has a set of tutorials you can pass or you can go to go playground where you can run your code some go code in browser so let's download the Go binary and install it. So on the download page, you can find the Go binary. You can download and install a Go binary according to your operating system and processor architecture. So choose which one is suitable for you. So I'm going to choose the one for me. And let's wait until it's downloaded. Let's wait a little bit. So I opened the package I downloaded and it says that I have already have a Go version installed on my computer. So it's just going to remove it and reinstall it. So this way we can update the version of Go if, you, uh, if we previously had one installed on the computer. So I'm just going to follow the installation wizard. And the installation process is very simple. It's pretty much the same also on Windows. So let's wait until it's installed completely. So now it says the installation was successful and we can just close the installation wizard and go and check. You can write Go code using any text editor. You can use your favorite text editor or even an IDE which supports Golang. For this course, I'm gonna use I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code. So um, let me navigate to my working directory, and I'm going to create a folder for this first video and call it lesson one. Let's open it in the Visual Studio Code. Great. By the way, optionally you can install. A Visual Studio Code plugin. This is this Go plugin, uh, which provides rich language support for the Go programming language and gives you some features like syntax highlighting and many other features. But this is optionally, it's up to you. You can decide whether to install a plugin, install a different plugin, or install no plugin at all. But um, let's go and Create our first minimalistic uh, Hello World program in Go. So for this, I'm going to create a file, and by convention, the Go source code files they should have an extension .go. So I'll I'll call it lesson one. Sorry, lesson one .go. And see, it even gave it this uh, Go icon. So, and I have some um, error messages in my uh, text editor uh, because 
I did not create a proper Go project, that's why it's complaining, but for the purpose of this video we're just fine writing a simple Go code, source code file and running it. So um, any Go lang pr program should have at least one package, one main package, so I'm gonna declare a main package using the keyword package and the name main. And the entry point of any Go program is the main function. So for this purpose, I'm going to create a function using the func keyword. And the name should be main, empty parameter list. And this is, this is fine. Great. So let's, for example, let's start simply by printing something to the standard output to the console. For this, I'm going to use the um, FMT package by the standard library of Go, which is FMT, um, and it's actually pronounced as FEMT by among the GoLang community. So uh, we're gonna use a function print ln, which prints the line to the standard output, and uh, we pass a string to this function, which is, for example, hello everyone, and let's run it and see what happens. So the simplest way to run a Go program is by using the Go utility and its subcommand run followed by the name of the Go source code file. So let's run it. And there is an error because the FMT package is undefined. So any packages I use in my program, any external packages I use in my program, um, I should import them. So I do this simply by writing the import keyword followed by the name of the package. In this case it's spammed. And let's try to run it again. Great, it's successful. So you've seen me just type go run and then the name of the go source code file and then it was executed. And it seems like kind of scripting language like JavaScript or Python and it seems like the code was just interpreted by, the inter by an interpreter. But in fact Golang is a compilable language and uh, the usual way we work with Go programs is we compile them and build them into one uh, binary which can later can be deployed and used and executed. But um, how to do this? So this utility Go we've just installed it comes with huge amount of um, other tools for building, testing, documenting of your code, of your programs, and many different useful things. So, and actually, if you want to compile your program and um, have a binary which you can later run and again and again, you can just use, for example, go command with build subcommand followed by the name of the go source code file and once we run it we can see for example in the current directory we have one binary file which is which has the same name as the source code file this is lesson one and we can simply run it for example like this and we see the output so then what about go run go run lesson one Dot go. Um, how does this work? Actually, behind the scenes, Go does the same we did um, before. It uh, builds the Go source files, compiles them into the binaries, and then it links the binaries together to produce one single uh, executable binary, and then it runs it for you. And once it's done, it deletes it behind the scenes. So it seems like uh, you can even use Go source code files, like single files for writing some scripts. So that's why this language is very, very cool and it can be used for many different purposes. Golang is a pretty powerful language and it has many features out of box, many features built in, many things, but it stays simple. So, and I'm go going to demonstrate you by writing just a simple web server in a few lines of code in Go. So let's just delete this code we wrote before and to write a simple web server which serves like a GET request, I'm going to use the HTTP package 
provided by the standard library of Go and its handle fun function. So what handle fun function requires, it's the path on which our server will be reachable, for example, in the browser by sending a GET request. And the second argument of this function is a handler function. So we need to define a handler function. We can do this straight away, but I would like to write it like the proper way by writing func keyword, the name. Uh, the name can be um, like any, any valid name for a function in Go. The only thing which is important is that the is that the parameter list is the same which this handle func requires. So in this case, it should be um, it sh it should have two parameters, two arguments. The first one is of type response writer from the HTTP package, and I'm gonna call it w. So w of type response writer, and the second parameter will be r for request, and it has the type of a pointer to request. So what a pointer is, we, we will um, learn in the further videos, in the next videos of this uh, course, but for now let's just write this handler function. So um, what this handler function does, it has, it accesses the request object and it can modify somehow the response writer. So, so for the purpose of this video, let's just um, receive the request and write something in the response, like hello from the server. So for this purpose, I'm going to use FMT package. And FMT package has functions not just for writing into to the standard output, but also uh, generally to uh, writing and writing to files or writing to strings. So for this purpose, we're going to use F print function from this package which requires a an instance of, of a writer so in this case we have it writer instance and what to write the data what to write so in this case we're going to use a string for example hello from the server yes fine and now we can use this handler function as the second argument for the handle func. Great. And what's missing now, it's actually we just need to start our HTTP server. So we can start it simply by uh, using this function, listen, listen, and serve. And this function requires just two parameters, for example, the host name and the port on which the server will be running and listening. So I just write it like this, host name and port, for example, let's say 8080. And the second parameter is new. I'll explain you later on why is it new and what can be passed here. But for now, let's just start our server by running, by writing go run, the name of the file. And yeah, my mistakes, my mistake, I forgot to import several packages. So if you're going to import one package, you simply write import and followed by the name of the package. But if you want to import several packages, you can simplify it by uh, writing the parentheses and within the parentheses, between them, you write the names of the packages. For example, I'm using FMT and I'm, I'm using also, um, HTTP package, which is a package, which is a part of the net HTTP package provided by the Go standard library. So I'm going to try again. So now it seems to be um, hanging, which is a normal <laughs> behavior for the server because server basically should not stop. It should be running and uh, serving the requests and giving the response. And if it stops, it means there was a failure or if it was stopped uh, explicitly. So uh, let's check, let's open the browser and make a request. So localhost 8080 and there was, the path was just um, a slash. So it means no path and I can just make a 
get request and it says hello from the server. Great, so it means it worked. Perfect. Cool. So you can stop the program by simply typing control T. Now it's interrupted. And this is it for the introduction. In the next lessons, we can actually talk about uh, the syntax of Go and features of Go deeply, but for now, this is fine. And thank you for watching. Uh, hit the like and subscribe button if you like this video and if you want more like this. Or if you have some wishes for improvements, just write a comment. And thank you and see you in the next one.